Hey everybody, it's Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. It's that time of year again where I get super excited because it's my annual winter outlook. Now I've been doing this for 18 years in the Carolinas and I'll be upfront with you, I love winter weather. It was my first love as a kid, so I really do love winter weather. I love snow. I don't think I want six, six months of it, but I do love it, so I'll be honest with you. But since we've seen over the last 10 or 15 years kind of a downward trend, it's definitely been kind of depressing for snow lovers. But let's talk about some of the setups for this upcoming season, because one of the biggest things we're going to see going into the 2021-2022 um, season is the fact that La Nina is in effect again this year. If you might remember last year, we had La Nina as well. If you don't know what La Nina is, you've probably heard of El Nino, La Nina, and La Nina. El Nino is basically when the water here is warm. This is the opposite. La Nina is when we have cooler than average water in the equatorial Pacific. What that does is how that impacts our weather. It changes the way the jet stream goes. The polar jet tends to dig across the middle of the country, but then lifts over the southeast. So in an average La Nina winter, we tend to see warm and dry conditions. And typically, the wet and cold weather gets pushed into the upper Midwest and oftentimes the Great Plains and into areas of the northern part of the country. And just to put this in perspective, going back and looking at all the winters where we had a moderate La Nina, which is what we're expecting this year, uh, which is basically water temperatures that are about a half degree or degree cooler than average, this is what we see in the Carolinas. All this orange, and I'm going to zoom in on this just so you can see this, is showing in the Carolinas we average about one to two degrees above average for the whole winter. So there's a pretty good correlation with warm winters in La Ninas. Now, before you freak out and go, oh no, snow this year. Here's the thing about snow. Snow sometimes can fluctuate a little bit even though temperatures are warm. And I've said this in past winters. Remember, it can be warm for three weeks, but if the cold air and moisture times out for one week, you can still get a ton of snow it's just that three out of four weeks will be warmer than average. One week will be colder, and you end up getting your snowstorm. So there's still some hope. And just to show you, most winters we see below average snowfall. But two of these La Nina winters, 2010 and 11, as well as 1718, we actually had above average snowfall in a La Nina winter. So it is possible, but the trends overall typically point to us seeing less snow in these type of setups. And just to kind of reiterate that, let me show you the stats here. Charlotte snowfall averages. So if you go back to the record books, which go back 143 years, our all-time uh, snowfall average is five and a half. So basically, that's taking all the snowfall that has fallen over 143 years and dividing it by 143, and that's what you get per year. So that's the long-term average. The 30-year average, which we update every 10 years, so that's currently 1991 to 2020, is only three and a half. That's actually down over the last 10 years, quite a bit. It was 4.3 just 10 years ago. So it's dropped to three and a half inches. And in the last 10 years, we've only averaged about 2.6 inches of snow per winter. But look at El Nino years. We averaged 5.4. La Nina winters, we've averaged 4.1. And La Nada, which is neutral, it's neither of these, 5.9. So actually the best time to get winter weather around here is when there is not an El Nino or a La Nina. That tends to be the best time. And remember, we've only been keeping the El Nino stats since about 1950. So here's the checklist for the upcoming winter. What should we expect? El Nino, La Nina phase, I just told you we've got a stronger La Nina in place. That means warm and dry. Near average snowfall in Siberia. Not to get too into this, but in October we look for how is the snowfall over in Siberia. If it's above average, that usually bodes well. This year it's near average, so typically warm and dry. Sea ice up in the Arctic, I'll talk more about this in a minute. Near record lows, that doesn't bode well warm and dry, maybe warm and wet, depending on how things go. Climate change and sea surface temperature still way above average. It's way too warm in the oceans, and we're seeing really warm atmospheric temperatures, warm and dry. So overall, the forecast would hint heavily towards warm and dry, but it doesn't mean that's the way it's going to be. Let's talk a little bit about these trends we've seen. These are the temperatures in the winter since 1970. If you grew up in the 70s, you know that was the golden era of snow and cold. It has been warming ever since. In fact, we have seen a pretty dramatic change in our temperatures, almost two degree jump in our winter temperatures over the last 10 years. That's significant. Now, snowfall lovers, this is not a great chart. I showed this earlier in the, in the fall. Since the beginning of, uh, of our record keeping back in 1878, our trend of snowfall is way down. Just let's, if you look recently, last 36 winters, a couple of these sticks out. This was a great winter, 2003 and four. That was when we got that huge snow 
in South Charlotte. Uh, 2002 and three was great. And then that 2013, 14 year. But overall, the numbers in the last 10 to 15 years have really been trending down. And that's why in the last 10 years, our snowfall average has dropped almost an inch. So here's the forecast. I would expect above average temperatures, maybe even well above average temperatures. It's really hard to find anything that points to cold air this winter. It's just every sign is pointing to above average temperatures once again this winter. But I will tell you, the snow and ice thing is always difficult in this situation because even though it's warm the majority of the winter, you can still get one or two good winter storms, which could drive your snow and ice totals up. But overall, I'm going to hint towards slightly below average. And because I still think there's a chance for some winter weather, remember, in 143 years of record keeping, we've never had a year with zero snow. So we always get something. It's just a matter of how much something. As far as precipitation, uh, it's typically dry. I don't think we'll see as wet as last year. That was the one weird thing about last year. It was warm, but it was wet. We had some moisture around. It wasn't snow. It was rainfall. So I think below average rainfall, like we've seen this fall, is going to continue. But let's talk about the monkey wrench in all this. So you may have heard me talk about the sea ice thing. So obviously, we, we know in the Arctic, it's not any land. This is an ocean. So we're seeing less sea ice over time. In fact, last year was a record low. That's this dotted line. This year's the blue line. It's not a record low for sea ice in the Arctic, but it's pretty close. And why is that important for our weather? It makes the jet stream crazy. And I talk about wild jumps in the, in the jet stream. We call that high amplitude ridging and troughing. So what happens is typically the jet stream goes up and down quite a bit. But in a typical year, we would see that. In a year like this, where there's not much sea ice, we get blocking patterns. Now, blocking patterns can throw a monkey wrench in this because they can bring us really cold air. You might remember last year, remember Texas, the big freeze and the power outages and all the controversy about that? We had one of these big dips in the middle of the country, and it made it really cold in Texas, but here it was warm. So this is the big warm-up on one side of that dip. There's a warm-up on the other side, but there's a big intrusion of Arctic air and winter storms. Now, if this sets up correctly, even in a warm La Nina winter, you can see that cold air set up over the southeast. But here's the problem. It's either going to be that, or this big ridge is going to be camped out, and much like last year, the cold air could be in the middle of the country, and we'll end up with really warm conditions. So this is the monkey wrench I'm talking about that could play havoc with the winter forecast. If there's going to be a bust, if it's going to be colder and snowier than we anticipate, it's going to be because of this blocking pattern, and it's setting up on the east coast, giving us a cold and snowy winter. And we did see that back in 2010 and 11 during the La Nina winter. That's the last time that setup happened. It's rare but it's still a possibility. So everybody who wants a cold and snowy winter and wants to see my forecast bust, we want to see that happen. So here's my bold predictions. I like doing this just for fun. They're going to be wrong. I'll tell you that right now. So Boone, your average is now down to 25.6 inches per winter. It's down 10 inches over the last 10 years. I expect below average, but still 22.6. Hickory, 6.9 is your average snowfall. I'm actually going to go with 5.8 inches of snow this winter. And Charlotte, our 30-year average is 3.5, and that's down. And that actually makes the forecast hard this year because with the lower average, it's easier to get one big storm and go above that. But I still think we're going to get probably one or two storms that are going to end up dumping about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. So I'm going to go with 2.5, but that's my least confident part of my forecast because 3.5 inches of snow is not a lot of snow. And if you've lived in the Carolinas any length of time, it does not take much to get one good storm that gives you four, five, six inches of snow. And in one event, it could be warm 90% of the winter, but we get one big storm at the right time, we could end up with above average snowfall. And that's why forecasting winter here is so difficult. It only takes the cold air and the moisture to sync up one time to give us a very snowy winter, even though the temperatures for the whole three months could be above average. I'll do a Q&A about this forecast as well coming up on Thursday. If you have questions about some of the things going on locally and what could throw other monkey wrenches in my forecast, make sure you check that out on our YouTube channel. We'd love to hear from you. I'll try to answer as many questions as possible. But once again, I'm expecting a warm and dry winter, but still some snow just below average.